so good to be with you all this morning. Today's gospel is a very beautiful gospel because you see from the Synaxarium readings that the church commemorates the life of St. John the Baptist through Zechariah and the life of Moses. And then when you read the gospel and all the readings of the church today, you find a very particular message. And that message is one that challenges me very much. <clears throat> it challenges me because it makes me ask the question of what do I see? What do my eyes see when I look at the world? Does my eyes see the good in the world? Or do my eyes see only that which is broken, that which is falling short, that which people aren't doing? Do I tend to be the type of person that criticizes and doesn't see the good in things? And it starts from St. Paul in the Pauline basically acknowledging who he is in Christ. And he says, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, I obtained mercy because I did it ing ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of the Lord was exceedingly abundant towards me. If we looked at the life of St. Paul when he was Saul of Tarsus, many of us would say that St. Paul when he was, is disqualified. He shouldn't be a preacher. He shouldn't be someone who should spread the gospel. If we look at it objectively from his life, from the way that he carried himself prior to his experience with Christ. But of course, we know that St. Paul went on to, Saul of Tarsus went on to be the great St. Paul. If you go to the Catholic epistle, it says for us, it challenges every single one of us, those who are listening, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. How do we connect the Catholic with the Pauline? Is that St. Paul always had a remembrance of who he was before Christ and what the immense grace of God was towards him that allowed him to be the evangelist that he went on to be and the preacher that he went on to be. His sin was at all times before him. His brokenness was at all times before him in order for himself to know how much he needed a redeemer. I feel like oftentimes us, as people of the church, we think we're good. We come to church, we come to liturgies, we pray, we don't think that we need a redeemer anymore. We don't think that we need a savior anymore. We don't think that we have an immense need for the healing presence of God. And that's why when you look at the gospel today, you see the holy people, the righteous people, the Pharisees. They can't see. They can't see that which is good right in front of them. They can't see that when John the Baptist came, he was very strict on himself. He was very ascetic. He lived a life of poverty. And they said, oh, he's, he's too ascetic. He's too crazy. He's, his hair is too long. He wears sackcloth. He's just a strange man. They criticized him. And then when they saw Christ, they said, oh, he dines with sinners. He eats with tax collectors. He sits with those who are broken. Critical, 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 critical. All they could see was criticism. They could see no good. They could see nothing that was beautiful before their eyes. In fact, when they saw Christ put eyeballs in the eyes of a blind man, they criticized him. Are we the type of people that we see things that are good, but still find ourselves looking at them with brokenness, looking at them with what they're falling short on? See, Jesus compared this generation in the gospel today, and he said a very, very difficult quote actually for us. He says that we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We did all these different things for you and you did not see it. See, those who complain, those who criticize, they're struggling to see their need and their own brokenness and their own need for a savior. We see the story of Moses today in the wilderness, in the Synaxarium reading. And we see that the Lord himself split the Red Sea. The very deep became a walkway. The place in which one would approach water, you'd say it's impossible to cross through. But 
God split the sea and they walked through. And what happened a short time after? They said, actually in Egypt, we were eating well. We had meat. We had all these different... But you were a slave. You were a slave. You were struggling. They were beating you on your back. No, but we were happier there, Moses. Did you forget what God just did for you? Did you forget the splitting of the sea? Did you forget the manna being raised? Did you forget the quail? Did you forget all the things that God has done? On a human level, practically for us, practically, to the pure, all things are pure. To those whose eyes see the good, they see only the good. We have to, as the people of God, learn to the best of our abilities to restrain our desire to complain about all things. St. Paul teaches us to do all things without complaining or grumbling. I find myself, it's difficult. I tend to be a complainer. I tend to complain about things. Confession, honestly. But you know, a person who complains all the time is like a person who has bad breath. You know somebody who has bad breath? You don't want to be a person around somebody who has bad breath because all you find is that every single time you're around them, you just hear negativity, you hear negativity, you hear negativity. We need to be as the people of God, those who lift up, those who encourage, those who see the good, those who are excited about the work that God is doing in the church and the work that God is doing in the world around us. See, there is a concept in psychology that's called the confirmation bias. If you think something in your mind is bad, when you attend it, it will be bad. So if I come into the church and I say, all oh, the people in the church are annoying people, I don't want to be around them, then when you come, you will prove that which you had in your mind. So we have to struggle against this idea of complaining, this idea of putting negative thoughts into our minds. Do all things without complaining or grumbling, St. Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Why? Why should we do all things without complaining or grumbling? Why should we not be the type of people that see the bad? Because to be quite honest with you all, the world already has enough brokenness. We don't need to highlight it. We don't need to say, oh, actually, this is broken too. We need to be as the people of God, those who lift up, those who encourage, those who tell people the goodness of God and the sweetness of their Savior and how much good God is doing in the world. Not focus on the things that are negative. See, God wants his children to stop complaining because in our church, we, have, we live a life of thanksgiving. If you notice in our church, every single time we start a prayer, what do we start it with? The prayer of thanksgiving. Why? Because from all things, we give thanks. We give thanks for the things that the Lord gives and the things that the Lord takes away. We give thanks for the good and we give thanks for the bad. We give thanks for all things because we know that our God is a sweet God. We know that our God is a redeemer who has come to not make our lives easy, but to give us the strength and to give us the encouragement to be able to endure any hardship that is put before us. I pray that every single one of us today would understand the power that God has given us by placing himself within us in the Holy Spirit and by giving us the Eucharist as the greatest power source that every single one of us have. Please, I beg you, I beg you, do not discount what you receive at the altar. Do not discount it. St. John Chrysostom says that when you receive the Eucharist, you should be as one who receives fire in his mouth and is a lion when he enters into the world. Why a lion? Because a lion isn't afraid of what the struggles and the world will throw at him. A lion is filled with encouragement, not because he is strong in himself, but because he knows that which he has received. All of us receive today fire. And when Abuna blesses you and says, go in peace, He's not saying, you, all right, peace out, guys. Have a good one. He's not saying that. He's saying, go in peace. The peace of God that you received in the Eucharist, go and give peace to other people. Go and take that which you received and give to those who you encounter. I pray that every single one of us today, if we play the flute for you, you would dance. If we do miracles for you, you would see the goodness of God. If you see that God is doing amazing things, don't be one whose eyes are filled with criticism. Be the one who sees good in all things. I'll tell you one final story. In my 40 days, 
I got to spend a little bit of time with His Grace Bishop Daniel of Deir Mbabula, St. Paul's Monastery. And I loved His Grace Bishop Daniel because anytime somebody would compliment him, you know what he would say to him? He would say, because your eyes are good. He'd say, this word that you gave was beautiful. He'd say, because your eyes are good. You see only that's good. I pray that every single one of us would be the type of people that all I can say to you is your eyes are good. You see only that which is good. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.